Thank you, Lord. Good evening and welcome to the Lighthouse Church. We are so happy for those of you that were able to come and be in service with us tonight. And those watching live stream, we're glad that you're joining us as well. If you have any prayer requests while we're in praise and worship um, from watching live stream, please send those in and we will pray with you. We just want to take this service up to the Lord tonight. We're here to worship and magnify Him. He is on the throne tonight. He is on the throne and we just love Him. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You. Lord, I thank You for everyone in here tonight, Lord, that they came expecting a touch from you, Lord, that you are joining us tonight to meet the needs of each and every person here, and Lord, I thank you for keeping your hand upon us today, we love you so much, you're so good to us, and Lord, I ask tonight as the word comes forth, that our hearts and minds are open to receive that it becomes rooted and grounded in our hearts and produces a harvest in our life. And Lord, I thank you for every person that's part of this body. God, I ask you to continue to draw them, lead them, guide them. We love our church family. And more importantly, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, rest in this place. Teach us how to be one with you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, rest in this place. Teach us how. Yeah. 
you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Because you brought me from a mighty, mighty long way.
service, but we're going to turn it over to Brother Jackie, and we're just going to continue rolling on live stream. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. The presence of the Lord is here. We just want to bask in His presence a little bit. Amen. Bask in his presence. You know, when the sun shines on a plant, it makes it grow strong and makes it fruitful. And as we stay in the sunshine of Jesus, then that's our strength. And his presence is what makes us fruitful. Amen. Praising him and loving him and him loving us. Amen. That's good times is in the presence of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to bring your attention to the hot pink basket here tonight. If you have tithes, offerings, missionary offerings, the missionary offerings coming up Sunday, why, bring it down and worship God by your giving anytime you get ready. Praise God. Just designate what you're giving unto, and uh, we'll sort it out from there with praises to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, we can meet and greet. We'll meet and greet. Everybody stand and find out who's here tonight. Amen. Must be you want to have a song here.
We honor you. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And I'll say yes. Yes, yes. I'll say yes. Oh. Lord, I'll say yes. Yes, I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Yes, yes. Cause you say yes. So I say yes, yes, yes. You meet all my needs, my needs. Oh Lord, I'll say yes. I'll say yes.
took the lamb. Holy is the lamb. <laughs> Holy is the Just obey the Lord tonight. You obey the Lord tonight. He's in our presence. He's in our presence. Sometimes he wants us to hear through a message in tongues, sometimes an interpretation, sometimes a prophecy, sometimes a word of wisdom, sometimes a word of knowledge. He is God. this earth and realm so many times we get all caught up with stuff and get worried about this and that and you know we're a couple of months Christmas to be on us and, and there's gift buying and food to cook and things to do but I'm telling you that the moment we draw our last breath in this earth none of that stuff will matter none of it will matter because we will behold the Savior's face. We will be ever in His presence. It won't be just visits here and there, but we'll be with those that have gone before us who've been in that presence ever since. They left here old and now they're young. <laughs> Some left here sick. Oh, but there's no sickness there. <laughs> oh, there's no trouble there. Some of them left in trouble. <laughs> oh, what sweet presence that it gives us just a little foretaste here. But all I'm talking about living in that presence. <laughs> oh, won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. All oh, we'll be singing and joyously ringing. Won't it be wonderful there? What? Jenna. 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 Uh, while the presence of the Lord was so great in here now and still is, uh, the Spirit of the Lord just wanted me to tell you that, that he, uh, he gave you something tonight. And it's in that realm that he gave it to you. And it was through pure worship. Because, see, he enters into a place of pure worship. That's why you could be standing in a church of Satan and receive something from God because of true worship unto him. And you've had an overwhelming desire, a hungering desire in your heart. And the Lord says to tell you that he's fulfilled that desire.
that that desire is fulfilled and you need to know that there is going to be an, uh, an overwhelming of his presence even while you're praising and I see you standing in a kid I've never been in your home but I see you standing even at the sink and you're just doodling and, and doing uh, with your dishes and you're just busying yourself in there and all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord's going to fall on you and when he falls on you you're going to begin to sing and, and, and as you sing there is going to be a power that you've not experienced yet and, and it is going to be a presence that you need to know that in that moment it is like you've got babies around you and, and you've got all this stuff but all of a sudden you are stepping into the presence of the living God and all of a sudden you are going to sing it's going to be oracles that and you've got to understand that there's not a song ever been sung that God hadn't already heard it because he's the creator of all things and so as you open your mouth and you begin to sing a new song know that it's not new to him it's new to you because he's allowing you to step up in the presence and sing with the angels around the throne and he's going to allow you to hear it in your ears and you're going to say well I know I'm going to remember this I'm going to sing this unto him but no you won't so, I, so I'm telling you to keep a pen and a pad by your kitchen sink because the presence of the Lord is going to fall on you and you got to write it down as it begins to fall on you and uh, oh yes thank you Lord and uh, Sister Jenny the Lord wants me to say to you that you have stood faithful and you've stood over a long period of time but the Lord says to tell you that he is going to start ushering in and sending you uh, some new people more people into your church and into your home and they're going to come and as they come in they're, they're not going to look holy and they're not going to act holy and they're not going to be those that are churchy they're going to be those that don't know about church that they don't know but I'm telling you they're going to fill up that place and you got to understand that you don't have to worry about well what am I going to preach to them and what am I going to tell them because the Lord says that you've already laid the foundation of the word of God and that foundation shall come forth and the seed will blossom and bloom but you need to understand that those that are coming in they're going to get it quickly There's going to, they don't have time to tarry it and grow old in it but they're going to get it quickly and as soon as they get it they're going out to get more and so be prepared the Lord said to prepare yourself and be ready even I see you with folding chairs you don't have room you've got to get some folded chairs the Lord said and, and so be real open God will provide them for you and I know that you've already got things set up but God said set it up and get ready for the overflow is coming says the Lord Woo, hallelujah oh thank you Jesus Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Let's just praise him for a minute. You know, we're not too big of a hurry here. Moshe, Moshe, love racisto, randa, little blade of a coyata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on, let's just, let's just be open to the Lord tonight. Just be open to the Lord. Hala mokula vlede se, kupara vaka da batinch da rancis deya. Jackie, uh, just go back and lay hands on, on John's knees. Uh, the Lord's fixing to do a work for you tonight, John, in your knees. Uh, I just, uh, I, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, right there, get ready. Come on, stretch your hand toward him. God's fixing to do a, 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 a miracle work in his knees right now. 
Father, I just thank you and praise you for the perfect cartilage in there. I just want to praise you, Father, for the things that you are doing right now in the physical body and in the spiritual body. There'll be steadfastness and unmoving faith right there, just released in Jesus' name. Just a little bit of a sorry. Woo, yeah, right there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the power of prayer. Thank you for the power of the blood. Oh, thank you for the power of prayer, and I thank you for the power of the blood. Oh, thank you for the power of prayer. Thank you for the power of the blood. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Lisa, Lisa, I need you to put your hand right in the middle of, uh, of Marty's back, right there up in the middle. God's fixing to do something right there in your spine, Marty. Uh, there's been a weakness and there's been a place going on in there, but I'm telling you, God is healing it. He's sealing it and searing it up, and he's healing it right now in the name of Jesus. Right there, yep, right up there in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is, right there. Woo, glory. Hey, la brenda la brenda basoya. Ha, la brenda la brita la brenda basusa to la brenda bakasta. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you. Woo, glory. My goodness. Hala boshura babaste. Roku bavranda la navel shura brahaya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank God for Jesus. Woo, I said thank God for Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness. My little sister, you got a song? Yes, come on. You come on. Yes. I'm telling you, I just get so excited every time I hear her sing. Yes, yes, come up, come up so we can get on, on the mic. Come on, get on that mic while she's getting, her, getting ready for her song. I have to share this with you because you spoke that to me on Monday. On Sunday of this last week, we had so many in my house that we couldn't even, they were stopping on top of each other over to the side. And so on Monday, I said, Lord, what can I do? I got to move something in my house. I, I got a big, 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 big room. So you think that's a lot. But I moved my table to the other side and I set it over and my husband came home and he said, what are we doing? What are we doing? And I said, uh, it's, it's nothing. I'm just trying something. And he said, no, we're doing something. Because, uh, and I said, you know what we're doing? We're making room. So Sunday that we can have people every other, we have folding chairs, which is what you said. We're going to have a church chair and a folding chair, a church chair and a folding chair to try to get them in. And she said also the ones that are saved and not saved. And so we're seeing that in a difference. And so everything you spoke is exactly what I have started preparing for Monday. So I'm excited and looking forward to that. Me, 
We just praise him. I'm telling you, I didn't even want to get out of my seat to come up here because it's all over. It's all over. I'm telling you, love his presence. And the thought of being able to be in his presence, as it is here on earth that we are in his presence, how wonderful it feels to be in heaven with him all the time. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. No more crying. No more saying goodbye to people we love. I'm just looking forward to it. Hallelujah. We're going to get our swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught. The word of the living God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm going to say this before I start, that if you are watching live stream, do not take anyone's word for whatever you're watching on television. You get your Bible and you make sure whatever, whoever you are watching lines up with the true word of God, that you never want somebody's opinion. You only want the one true word that will set you free. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I'm very thankful tonight um, that, you know, even when our bodies are or tired, or, or whatever is going on in our physical man, I'm so thankful that it doesn't affect the spiritual man. Amen? That he is still, he is still in there, and, 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 and he's still as strong as he ever has, has been. Amen? Amen. Tonight, we're gonna, I'm going to just talk tonight about a little bit about trust his faithfulness. Amen? If you'll turn with me to Deuteronomy, we'll start Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. I've had kind of a chest cold going on since um, a couple of weeks, and I was afraid when I was singing tonight that and playing the drums and me you know, being as fluffy as I am now, that, that I thought, oh my gosh, I probably sound like Darth Vader on the, on the live stream, you know, between songs like, <sighs> getting my breath, <sighs> you know, I thought, oh, I'm not even going to listen to it tonight, it's like, oh, you know, Justin's point, and it's like, oh man, <sighs> you know, got to have some air up here, let's see, Deuteronomy 7, and I'm sure everybody's got it but me. I just love him tonight that he's he is faithful. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a, how many? 
thousands, generations. Do you believe we're covered tonight? I believe our grandchildren are covered and our great-grands and our grands after that. I'm telling you, he's faithful to that. We don't need to worry about being able to do what he's called us to do tonight because he's got us. That the word all the way through, you know, I mean, and I'm not going to go, uh, there's so many scriptures in here about his faithfulness and, and his, you know what, I want to look at tonight at his, at he, who he is and his faithfulness, that, that not only is he faithful, but you know what, he's got faith in you and me. He's got faith, for, faith in us to do what it says that, you know, that, that we are called, that he draws us, that if we're not drawn, then we won't come to him, that, that for him to draw you, then he's got plans for you. Do you hear me? That he had faith in you before he drew me to him. Because I could have went a different direction and, and anything, but he, he drew me because he had faith in me. That even though he knew along the road where I was going to mess up and where I was going to fall and where all of this was going to happen, but yet at the same time he knew his faithfulness to me was going to see me through it. That he gave me the word that I can stand on through this, my shortcomings. That even whenever we are, even before I knew him, him he was faithful to me that he kept me amen that even when before I became a believer that he was faithful to the unbelievers that's how faithful he is tonight and sometimes it's almost like we have to we have to be talked in to believe in what his word says about us that we got to be talked in and coaxed in to to believe what he says and I'm telling you tonight that that it's worth it because he has proved time and time again through this word that he is who he says he is, and that he is faithful to us. Amen? Amen. Let's look at First Thessalonians 5, 24. First Thessalonians. Faithful is he that calleth you. Who also will do it? Don't never, do not ever be concerned about stepping out in something he's called you to do. First of all, because he is faithful to you, it says right here in his word, he doesn't lie. There's not one lie in this book. There's not one lie in this book. That when he gives you conditional, there's, now there is conditional and unconditional promises in this book. But on the conditional, the unconditional promises, he will, he, he never lies in this book. That if he's called you and you, then you don't have to worry about because he's going to empower you to do what he's called you to do. Amen. We don't have to worry about that, that he's got that. Let's look at Titus 1, 2. Excuse me. You know, when I was younger, I, I fell in. I loved him when I was young. That I did that, and then I, I walked away. He didn't walk away from me. I walked away from him. I walked away from my walk with him. Now, his love never changed. His faithfulness to me. He kept me. Never changed. But but it was me. An action I did. Amen. But I, when I was younger. I was always, I was very shy. I mean, I was, I was always just, you know, like, you know, you see those just like shaking. And, and I never would have thought myself to be here speaking in front of somebody, especially with a microphone. I was the one that had always had the microphone. When I was singing, I would be way down here, you know, standing closer to the back, you know, just moving my lips, not really saying a whole lot, just pretending. I was doing lip syncing before it came out. Nothing, you know, because I was, I was very nervous. In fact, when I was in school, I was in uh, one of my teacher's classes, and we had to do an oral report in history, and I'm thinking, oh, oh my gosh, you know, I was so nervous, and, and I was up there talking, and I couldn't have, you couldn't have books or nothing, you had to do it by, you know, by remembrance, and what you'd study, and I, and I was sitting there, and I was talking, and shaking, and, and just, you know, and just, and then she looks at me in front of everybody, and goes, uh, D, and it's like, oh, man, and then that kind of just made it, because I remember that, that's how detrimental it was, here I am, 54, and I remember that in, like, seventh grade, so, but, you know what, God takes 
where I'm limited and unlimits me. And I thank him for that, that, that where I stop or where, where I, my, my weaknesses are, he makes strong. And I so praise him tonight that he, that he gives me the opportunity to speak for him. I'm telling you that it is a, a honor for me to be up here in front of, of whoever's watching and, and this church, that even if it's one or 100, that, that I am so thankful that he's allowing me to be a spokesperson for him. That I appreciate that. that. That I get to be a billboard for God. That I get to speak and be a commercial. Do you know what? That's what we are tonight. That if you can see yourself as being a commercial for the one true living God. That you are. That what you're saying. That you know what? And when you do the popcorn, you know, the popcorn messaging and... And, you know, and Jess, when she kind of here, you know, she, she'll tell you real quick, no, she, this ain't, you know, she's not about this. No, she sings, but, but she's not about this. But there was, she says when she, st- when she brings what she brings, I'm telling you, it sticks with me. When she brought, at one point, I don't remember how long ago it's been, but she said, she said, if you trust him enough to save your soul, then go on and trust him for the rest of what the word has for you and the promises in there for you. And I'm telling you, and that stuck with me, that, that idea that if I'm going to tr- trust him, because he is faithful, he is faithful, and I trust him for, for saving my soul, then, then why not just step on out and, and trust him for my healing, and trust him for my deliverance daily, and for saving me daily out of things that's going on. I'm not telling you that he needs to save my soul daily, but he saves me daily from what I, when the, we walk through things, amen, that he's got us. Let's look real quick at Titus 1, 2. Well, Jackie, you want to read it? I'm having a problem. I didn't mark my Bible tonight. Titus 1, 2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, that God cannot lie, God that cannot lie, Promise before the world began. He cannot lie. So anything that he says in this book that he has for you, that he cannot lie. That whenever it says in here that he's going to give strength to the weak, then he cannot lie. The strength is yours. When he says that his, his, that his joy is our strength, then when his joy, he's going to renew our joy for our strength. Amen. That we can take what he says tonight to the bank. That I'm so quick to eat some restaurant that someone has told me about or not eat there because of what they said. But yet at the same time, I struggle with what the word says about my life that I cannot, that, that it's like, oh, is that really for me? Because I'm telling you, if you can't believe it, because what we have our faith is based on how faithful we think he is. Amen? That our faith, it says he's the author and finisher of our faith, which that is true. But if we don't know his faithfulness to a certain level, then our faith is not going to be there. That you trust someone as much as you think they're trustworthy. Amen? That we do. We base, our, our faith is based on what we think his faithfulness is, the level of it. Amen? Amen. Food for thought. God has to be truthful to be unchanging. He's an unchanging God. He's got to be unchanging to be faithful. Do you know that if, if his word says one thing, and then let's say that it says, you know what? He, he not only has he... Uh, saved us but it says in his word that he he heals our diseases you know psalms 103 1 through 5 and that he renews our strength as eagles well if that was the case and he changed his mind he goes "Eh." i did i did for them but i'm but you know what i'm gonna change it up just a smidge and now that I'm going to make it where if you do this then you know what we would not be able to we we would be lost we would. That one minute we would be able to believe something, and you know people like that. I do. That one minute it's one way, and then another minute it may be another way, so you're trying to, you, you don't know what to believe anymore. 
Well, he's not like that. It says in his word, he cannot lie. That his word, it can be built a foundation on this word for us. That he gave us this word that we can continue being being ready and continue loving him and know that he is a man of his word. That what he did for Noah, he would do for me. What he did for Abraham, he will do for me. In fact, Exodus says, you know what? Not only does he do that, but it says that he gives us certain names of himself. That God, the, the peace, God, the deliverer, God, the, the, you know, I mean, he gives us certain names that we can have to, to be, to stand on for him. Amen. That he was God, Jehovah Jireh, the provider, you know. And, and I like that because for what he did, he, he gave Abraham whenever he went up. He went up on the, the thing that he already had the ram in the bush. Amen. That he's like that, that if I needed a ram in the bush, I'm going to have one. Because he is faithful. He cannot lie. He's unchanging tonight. And if we can get that, then we can, our faith will, will grow. As sooner that we can see that and the relationship, it's hard to have a relationship with someone you can't trust. That if, that if, you know what, if you have something going on and you're, you're concerned about the word working in your life, then you know what, then don't look up, look in the mirror and see what it is. What is it that, that you're, you're not, you're not growing, that something's going on and you'll find it because you know why? Because he will show you he's so sweet and he's so gentle and, and he points it out that it's not even condemnation. That it's constructive criticism. I love, you know what? I love him. That when I, something's going on, that he's so sweetly and so gentle, a daddy. He's so gentle. And, and I just love that about him. That, that he don't start ripping me to shreds. He don't, he don't do that. That he, he just starts, you know, just a little at a time. And, and he shows it to me where that, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know? And I just love him for that, that that's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of dad that we belong to. Amen? That he is faithful. I faithfully love my children. I too, I'm faithful to them, that I love them, that there is nothing that they can do that would make me stop loving them. Now, if they're mean, I may not want to be around them. Amen? But I will never stop loving them. Ever. And I think he loves me so much more than what my heart feels for my children. And, and even when I wasn't, even when I didn't deserve his love, he gave it to me. He was faithful to me even when I was unfaithful. Amen? I just love him tonight because he is unchanging. Let's look at Deuteronomy 31.8. Deuteronomy 31.8. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. He goes before us, he will be with us, he will not fail us, and he will not forsake us. You know, if you say, well, it's the Christian lifestyle. Well, if you, if you spread that out, it's Christ, I for in. Wait, I've done this at home. Christ <laughs> is always near, I-A-N. Christ is always near. So, and I made that up. <laughs> so if you want to write that down, take that note, feel free. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I just love him tonight. Let's look real quick. Second Samuel 22. Getting my scriptures out quick early. Second Samuel 22, and we're going to go through 29 through 34. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God? Save the Lord. And who is a rock? Save our God. 
33. God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. Amen. Amen? So he never misleads us or causes us to go the wrong direction. He don't. He doesn't do that. That if, if you are feeling like that you're going the wrong way or things aren't working out, then get back in the Word and in your prayer closet and see where we missed it. Amen? That it's, it, that it's us. It's not Him. That He's not going to cause anything to cause reproach on you, nor is He going to cause reproach on His Word. Because He doesn't lie. He's faithful. He's unchangeable. And if, that does not, if that's not lining up, then you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen? Because I'm telling you tonight that if it's not lining up with the Word... That he does, he does not cause chaos. That his, that he just like tonight when when Jenny was talking about, I don't really call you Pastor Jenny, Miss Jenny. <laughs> Anyways, when she was got the the confirmation word, really is what it is. That he works like that though. That it goes as smooth as butter. Amen. That she already had. That he gave that to her here, confirmed it to not what was going on, and she's already making way for the the chairs. Amen. And that's how he works, that he's not going to leave you stranded. He's not going to leave you not knowing. He's not going to leave you you running around with your chicken with the head cut off, just waiting to, for something to happen. You, you, Pastor always says, you, whenever you hear from him, you pray, you ask when, where, and how. And then that will help us to stay on track. Amen? Amen. That's a good word. He is unchanging. Let's look, and I already said that once. Malachi, we're going to get three and six, three, six there. Malachi 3, 6. <clears throat> I love this song that that pastor sung. Say yes, because he says yes. Amen? Amen. And James like, yay, I didn't miss it. <laughs> that goes with my message. <laughs> It's like, see, and he loves me. He loves me just as I am. Amen. I love him for that. He loved me before I even knew him. And I would tell my sisters, because I'm the oldest, you know, I don't look it, that he goes, he says, I tell him, I said, they'll say, I love you. And I'll say, I love you. Not more, but longer. Amen. See? I love them longer because I've known them longer than they knew me because I was the oldest. Amen. He's loved me longer. He loves me, he loves me so much. And he's loved me longer, even before I knew him. Even before, I mean, but before anything, he, he loved me. And I just love him tonight for that. Amen. And then Malachi 3, 6 says, For I, let's read it together. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. We're not consumed. What this word says is for us. Amen? Amen. He is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's always present. He's always truthful. Always doing what he promised. That's who you can have faith in tonight. That he's not some fly-by-night, changes mind, this, no, yes, no. He's not like that. That we can put our trust in him. We can put our trust in him because he is all-powerful. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He stood by his word from the time that he started creating. He's the creator. Before, whenever he started even creating the world, whenever he brought Jesus in, he gave us the, the gateway back into heaven to be with him and cancel out all of what was going on there. And then whenever Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, I'm going to send you a comforter. And that's exactly what he did. Whenever he, he, he left, he didn't leave us. He left us of the Holy Ghost. Amen? The same power because Jesus was walking the earth healing, delivering, and all of what he was doing. And then whenever he left, he gave them the Holy Ghost that would bring back his word to their remembrance. Not only was it the Holy Ghost, like, oh, the warm and fuzzy, it was the Holy Ghost. 
Do you know what I mean? That it was the same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead, Holy Ghost. It wasn't just someone that you can go snuggle up and feel all warm and fuzzy. It's the Holy Ghost that's going to make sure that you can walk through whatever you need to walk through and get out of whatever situation that we get ourselves in. And if we need to pray for someone and we don't know how to pray, then he prays through us. Amen? And not only did he give us the comforter, he went a step ahead of that and said, I'm going to my Father and I'm going to be... And he and seeds for us. So not only did he give us the Holy Ghost to walk this earth and have it inside of us that for leading and guiding us and bringing back his word to remembrance, but now we have our brother Jesus Christ up there in heaven superseding in their intercession for us. I mean, I'm telling you tonight that he is faithful that he started out with the, he gave, was faithful to the to Hebrew children. Whenever he told them, he told, he told Moses he said, you go and I'm bringing them out. He didn't say, you go and, and I'll bring them out. And uh, you know what? Good luck. Here's 20 bucks. See what you can make a deal with Pharaoh. He didn't do that. He said, I'm bringing them out. And whenever he brought them out, the Hebrew children didn't decide. You know what? They weren't putting putting weapons up. They weren't doing all this different stuff, making preparation to go. Because it wasn't up to them that God stood on his word and brought them out of Egypt. That it wasn't that they started started going and you know what and hiding weapons and and working out and getting you know and sneaking out none of that the years they would still be in bondage if it wasn't for God sending Moses in and and being faithful to his word even when they were unfaithful they were murmuring and complaining after he had already done what he'd done and it wasn't enough it wasn't enough it wasn't enough that he was still faithful to him and kept them even through that, he kept them. That he did not, that at any point, he could have stopped keeping them. But he's a man of his word, and he's seen them through. It was their choice to be 40 years. It wasn't his. But he was faithful through that 40 years, keeping them. Making sure their shoes didn't wear out. Making sure that their clothes, they weren't all out working good jobs and making a living doing something. He kept them because his word, he said, he was going to get to take them out. Amen. And to the promised land. Don't give up before you get to your promised land tonight. Because he's faithful to his word and he's taken you there. Amen. That he has taken you there. That if we stop in midstream, then it's not what his promises is still his promises. That we're the ones that are choosing not to receive them. Because he is faithful. He's unchanging. He don't lie. And yet, we, you know what? And, I'm not, and here I am. Is, you know, I'm not trying to coax you into to believing what he has for you. I want you to see him for who he is. We we'll still make choices. We still make our own choices. But it doesn't, our choices doesn't change who he is. And neither does circumstances. Circumstances can be one way. But he's an unchanging God. Amen? Amen. He doesn't change his mind. What is, the, what is the basis of your belief and faith? That he is, is not going to change his mind. If you thought for a minute that he was not who he said he would, none of us would be here tonight. That your belief and your faith is in who you see him as. Amen? If I didn't think that he really was the one true king and that he died and saved my soul, this would be it for a moot point. Amen? We have got to see who he is. We not only have to see it, we've got to know it and share it. Whatever it takes to get this word out there, we have to do it. And who he is, there's so many misconceptions of who he is, that he is, that, that, that pe- there's people that know people, that, that they're, they're Christians, so they say that have completely discombobulated anything that God has done. I'm not being the negative Nancy up here, excuse me if there's a Nancy watching, but you have to, we have to make sure that what we're telling them that, that is true. That's why we say we say you know what get your word out, get in there, get in the word, know you know what know what you're saying, because he leads us and he guides us, amen, 
Amen. Okay. He loves us unconditionally. He wants us to be confident and believe on his promises. You know the difference in believe, believers' hopes and non-believers' hope is that our hope has an assurance. Amen? That, that it's one thing, oh, I hope this works out. No, no, we have the word and our hope has assurance added to it. That it's not just, a, just hoping, but it's a hope with an assurance. Amen? Amen. There's not, a, there's not one lie in the word. He can't. So we make the choice to believe what the word says or what we feel or what the circumstances say. When we aren't sure what we believe, then it opens the door for doubt. And once doubt gets in there, then fear can come. And then it just stagnates you where that you're not getting your walking 40 years instead of this, how long it's supposed to take. Amen. You can't have a true relationship with someone that you don't trust. We get through the storms. Roman notes here. We get through the storms in life with the unconditional promises of God. Amen. If He changed, then we wouldn't have the assurance of anything. We can rest in God's faithfulness. Let's look at my last scripture, Romans eight twenty eight. Romans eight twenty eight says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, that everything works out for our good. God is faithful and doesn't lie. Then, the, he, the I already just told you that part, he saw them out even though that they were didn't keep their faith. I got ahead of myself, I'm sorry. He loves us and is faithful. So now, everybody stand up. I'm done with what I was, I was bringing to you tonight, but I have something I want you to repeat. God is faithful. God's grace sought me, bought me, and brought me. I will never lose my shout and testimony. Amen. Amen. He is faithful to his word. And we just got to believe that. Not only believe it, but receive it in your heart tonight that, that his faithfulness goes above any faithfulness that you have ever experienced in your life. Amen. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Did you, get, did you receive? Did we receive? Does anybody in the house really believe he's faithful? Hey man, we got it, didn't we? Listen, before we, I'm going to let you go, but before we go, I have a prayer request. Um, and most of you uh, were here to meet uh, Renee and Ed Carr, who are from McMinnville, Oregon. And if you didn't, they came and visited with us for a week. And uh, they wanted to get here in time to come to church, and they got to come. And uh, anyway, they left their home. They have one of those travel trailers, and they left their home September 7th. And um, they are on their last uh, leg of going home. Uh, he had sisters to visit, one in Kentucky and here and there. And anyway, they, they kind of made a trip. And uh, <clears throat> they were right on, right on course of, of getting their trip. And yesterday evening, around 5 o'clock, um, he was... Uh, they stopped and he was pumping gas in his vehicle and he dropped to the ground and um, so they called paramedics and uh, they uh, they were in uh, Rock City Wyoming. Rock Springs Wyoming Rock Springs Wyoming and they live in McMinnville Oregon okay so uh, anyway this is where this happened and um, so they, par uh, they uh, called paramedics. They got him into a hospital. They thought he had a heart attack. They met, flighted him to Salt Lake City. And so Renee is, was there in Rock Springs, Wyoming, and could not go with him. And he is now in Salt Lake City, and they had a vehicle, uh, this uh, a rig, you know, that she doesn't drive, or like an RV, RV, that, that he did all the driving. And so she is in that hotel room uh, awaiting uh, 
so this afternoon, her daughter or his daughter and um, uh, son-in-law uh, flew to Salt Lake, and then the son-in-law was going to rent a car, drive down to Rock uh, City, uh, Rock Springs, to uh, uh, get the RV and drive it back home. Anyway, it's a big traumatic thing that's going on for this couple right now. And uh, <clears throat> they, at their age, they're retired. But um, I talked with her today, and, uh, on, on, and on top of uh, the heart, they said he had COVID. And um, that uh, today's re reply from the nurse who called her said their main concern is that there is no response from him, that uh, no, no brain activity from him. And uh, at this point, uh, I, I know that me and Jackie both have carried them since last night. And um, we prayed and, and carried them today. My heart hurts for them. It's one thing to have a sickness to attack you, but to be in another state and alone and, 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 and. And I do not believe this was a thing of God. No one can make me believe that this, this, this was a plan. No, God doesn't make those kind of plans. So I would, I would like to ask everyone, even on the live stream too, their name is Ed and Renee. I would like for you to pray right now as if it was your parents that was there being stranded, that they, they've got to have two things, that Renee has got to have strength and wisdom yeah. of how to handle this. And she said to me this afternoon when I called her, he just needs to wake up. He just needs to wake up. And so I would like for, in fact, if everyone would just kind of step out in the aisle and let's join hands and let's pray for them. There we go. There we go. There it is. Oh, praise your name. Father, right now we just lift up Ed and Renee Carr before you. God, we bring them up into the heavenlies. We lift them up from the heavenlies, Lord, and we thank you, Father, for the faith that is in this house. We thank you, Father, for the word, that word of we just praise you right now, Father. We will offer a praise, Father, and we thank you, Lord, that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now lives. It now lives in Ed and Renee Cor. And Father, we thank you for making a way where there is no way. We thank you for bringing them out. And Father, we thank you and praise you. And oh God, we thank you for life. For an abundant life for both of them, Father. I thank you. Oh, the Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, she can be here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing and deliverance right now, Father. Thank you, little boy. Shut out of a so turn out of a little soldier. Thank you, Father, that you are a God that cannot lie. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, 
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. And we honor you. We give you all the glory. We, we honor you, Father. Oh, we honor you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just praise you this night, Lord. We praise you. So, the base of Oh, we thank you, Lord, for the light. Thank you for the light. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes. Oh, by Jacob, a petition for to Husakanaha. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes, yes. Also, um, um, Marie isn't here tonight because uh, she had extreme dizziness and uh, she was in bed all day. And uh, we just need to lift her up. You know, she don't like missing service. And uh, so right now we just lift up Marie and we just thank you, Father, for healing virtue for her. And we praise you, Lord, that above all things you would that she prosper and be in health as her soul prospers. And I just thank you for that. Father, we send your word, your word of health and wholeness and completeness to her this hour, this night. And we thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. And we just praise you for it. We just praise you for it right now in Jesus' name. And uh, we have a request that uh, came over the live stream. Rhonda Ledbetter needs prayer. And uh, right now, Lord, you know everything. You know what her, her needs are. And we just praise you for it right now in Jesus' name. We lift her up, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for health and strength and wholeness and completeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We give you honor. And, Lord, we also thank you for touching her son. We just thank you right now for t touching that family in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, by Yadabakasoya. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we just thank you and praise you for uh, Vernon, my Vernon having a God encounter. We just thank you for that. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, I just uh, want to say that, you know, something I received when Jenny was, uh, one of the times that she was preaching, that she told us that, that the Lord gave it to her to how to approach uh, people different. And instead of, you know, just, just, you know, asking them, you know, are you saved or do you know Jesus, that we, that now that we ask them, do you know Jesus loves you. Yeah. And, and do you know, do you know that he died for you? Yes. And do you know, do you know that he really wants you to be with him in heaven when you leave this earth? And can I tell you, Jenny, I, that has been transforming for me. Uh, I have had the opportunity to to. Last night, the little cashier that I was at, I just leaned in and she she says, "How are you doing?" I said, "I am doing marvelous on purpose," and she smiled real big and she said, "Well, well, that's wonderful." And I just leaned in, looked her dead in the eyes, and I said, "Do you know that Jesus loves you?" And she just, I mean, her little face just lit up, and she said, "Well." Well, thank you. I said, 
Do you know really that he really does want you to be with him in heaven when you leave this earth? She said, well, that is just great. She said, what is your name? I'll never forget you. What's your name? And you know what? It's made it so easy to just witness and to, you know, just make them know that Jesus really does, really does love them. And so thank you for sharing what the Lord gave to you. Amen. So I'm telling the rest of this body, you get on it. Amen. You get on it. Amen. Amen. Now, Jess, get you on a microphone because we want to hear you. Scripture. I was praying uh, last week, and the Lord shared. So I'm going to share with my family around. because uh, my y'all are my church family. Yes. <laughs> and so in Jesus, when they said in the in the Gospels, they said, um, "Well, your mother and brother wants to see you." And He said, "Well, these are my mother and my brother. You yeah, know, this right. is my family." And so the Lord showed me something this week. I was praying. Uh, this last week in my study, and on Thursday night of last week, Willie's legs were really swelled up real big. And so that's signs of things that we don't want to see. That's right. And so I just said to, I went to my mother's room and I said, Mother, I need you to pray for my husband and uh, through the night and in the morning. And we're just, every time you wake up and you think about it, pray for him. And she said, okay. And so we went to bed and my husband got up the next day and went to work. And I'm in there praying and just reaching God. And the Lord came to me and he said, do you believe that I'm faithful? Like Lisa said, <laughs> do you believe that I'm unchanging? Yes, I believe that, Lord. Do you believe that I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever? And I said, yes, I do. And he said that I'm going to show you something. I'm going to share this with y'all. Second awesome. Kings, I'm going to show you because it has been miracle working. And this is going to change some of your lives. Okay, right here. Second Kings, it's, uh, Second Kings 2.21, it says, He went forth into the spring of the waters. He cast salt in there, and he said this, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. And barren means lack, with, without lack or with anything. And so he said to me, he said, Jenny, fill your bathtub up. Get you some salt. Sprinkle it over that bathtub like this. And he said, you say, thus saith the Lord. There's no more death or no more barren in this land, in this on your land. So we, well, I, told, I was so excited. My mom came through the door at the other end of the house and she opened up the door and she said, I know you're praying. I said, no, mama said, God said this. And so I began to share with my mama what, she said, what he said. And she said, I was at the other end of the house praying and the Lord told me to tell you that Willie needed to take a salt bath. Woo! Well, there you go. So here's the thing. So Willie came home, and the first thing the devil will tell you is you don't need salt for kidneys because that means swelling. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa's dealing with that a little bit. So we know that for well. And the devil came against me. I said, because you're coming against me, I know he's going to get in that bath. So when my husband got home that night, I, I poured that bath water, and we sprinkled table salt just like that. We got this scripture, and we spoke it out of his mouth, and he said, I believe it. Within three days, he had lost 12 pounds. The swelling's completely Woo! down. Not only that, I called my sister on the phone. Her son had a four-wheeler accident. It threw him off into the field, cut up his back real bad. Had a, His eyes was pus, scratch on his eye, beat red. Everything was going on, and I called my sister, and I said, God said, to tell your family to get in some salt water because he's done with death and he's done with barrenness, he's done with lack, he's done with that. And so I began to share it with my sister and my 18-year-old nephew come through the door and she said, he said, you ain't gonna believe this. She said, he said, mama, my eyes hurt to drive. He loves to deer hunt and do all that kind of stuff. He said, my eyes hurt to drive. I wanted to stop. She said, well, your gin just called and told me that you put some salt in the bath water and say, thus saith the Lord. It ain't about what gin says, it's about what God says. Yeah. Yes, you put that salt in that bathtub and in the middle of the broad daylight, he filled that bathtub up just as full as ever, sprinkled that salt in there and he spoke these words and he said, Jen, I just knew for sure when I went under that water, he said, so I laid my head clear under the water, opened up my <laughs> eyes under the water in that salt. When he came up out of that water, both eyes were completely healed. Woo! He could see. He left up out of that house and went down the store and said, I'm going to get a Coke to celebrate. I was so excited. I called my sister who lives in a different area 
I told her what the Lord had shared with me because God said share it with your family. So I shared it with my sister. She got in the middle of the broad day, sprinkled the white salt, <laughs> began to confess it. She said, Lord, whatever you have for me. I didn't see her for two or three days. On the third day I saw her. She said she was dealing with a, a rising and a boil on her leg and she showed it to us. It dried up when she got out yes. of the water. Completely. It was off of her leg. Not to mention my brother came by. I said, I got to share with you what the Lord said. I showed him the scripture. I told him, get some salt. Matter of fact, I went down to Walmart, but every bottle of salt they had on the, <laughs> on the shelf, I taped up that scripture on the outside of that salt. I began to knock on doors and tell people to get in hey. the water. Get some miracles Woo. from God. And so the next thing did, my brother got down in the Woo. water and he said this. He said, Jenny, he dunked seven times. On the sixth time, he almost drowned. He joked in his water. I said, I didn't tell you to dunk seven times. He said, no, but I was listening to the Holy Ghost and I dunked seven times. That night, he had, couldn't even sleep. The power of God came in his house. Woo. He seen a vision, a blue river coming through his body. He was completely healed. He had kidney stones. They done said there was two huge kidney stones. He went to the doctor and they did an x-ray and said they looked better than any young person's kidneys. Why? Because he died in the salt water. Yes. Why? Because the word of God is the truth. So I'm going to encourage everybody in this room and even your friend. Yes. I'm telling you, she probably takes some salt water. Put yes. a little salt in Hey. We, it don't matter. We ain't limited to the bathtub. I know God's bigger than this. And you said he's wearing salt city. You know what I said? The Lord said, Jenny, share that salt. Here's the thing. Get it in a little cup. She can put a little salt in it. If she gets to see him, touch him. Just rub it on his skin. Yes. Because it ain't about us and it ain't about that. But it's about the word of God. He said he's yes. the same yesterday, today, and forever. And not only that, I can't even go into the multiple testimonies. Because I ain't stopped there. I knocked on my aunt and uncle door. I got an uncle that's six and be 90 years old. He said, I don't even take baths anymore. But when you leave here today, I'm getting in that water. Yes. And I'm going to believe God for miracles. And so God is doing the work. So I want to encourage anybody. Lisa who said sometimes our outside body don't line up with our inside body. Every time the devil irritates me, I'm filling up my bath water. And I'm sprinkling that salt. Hey. And I'm saying there's no more barren. There's no more death in this home because of what the Lord said. That saith the Lord. Hey. So God be Yes, hallelujah. Okay, so t tell the scripture one more time. Second Kings 2.21. There Just it is. get you a regular table salt in, at Walmart. Write the scripture down. Second Kings. Tape it to the side of the salt. That's what I did. I taped it to the side Chapter of my salt. Two, verse and then 21. what I do is you just sit there. And so you set it in your bathroom just like you do your, your bath water. And here's the thing. Some people say, well, Jenny, you're way, way out there for God. I'm going to tell you what. When an 18-year-old boy get some water and open up his eyes. You know what? I got to tell this too. You know, it was so bad. My brothers had scratched eyes several times, been a doctor, and even after they're healed, they're still scratched there. Yeah, scars. Well, my sister's husband was switching jobs, and so his insurance was switching. So prior to the four-wheeler accident, my nephew told my sister, she said, he said, when I'm looking at the deers way out there, Mama, it's kind of a struggle. So she said, we're going to get your eyes checked. In the process, he has the four-wheeler wreck, right? In the process, he gets in the water. In the process, they already had an appointment. He goes to the appointment, and I don't you know what they say. There ain't no scratch. There ain't nothing. Your eyes are better than any 2020 vision in the world. <laughs> so not only did he get healed immediately, sight. he got sight in the water. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh. What? What? Yes. <laughs> Our little granddaughter, she loves baths. My, my grandbaby, this is for the babies. My grandbaby, this has been, a, we're seeing miracles, y'all, every day. When, my grandbaby, he's two years old, and he loves going everywhere with his grandma. And I said, I'm going to go outside. And Jenna had blessed me with something, so I was holding it, and the baby was following me. Well, he loves dirt. And we come down the steps at her house. She's got a big pot there. And he stuck his hand in ants this far. About a thousand ants on oh his hand. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my Lord. They was biting him, biting him. He's screaming, screaming. I'm stripping him out naked right out in the front yard, just pulling the clothes off of him. In the name of Jesus. And 
I'm slinging them off there. He had just swelled. His hands started swelling and just all puffed off all over his belly and his back. They'd already got him. It was just awful. We got in the house. Jenna said, Mama, get that salt. We filled that bathtub up. We sprinkled that salt. He got in there. You can't even see a bite on him. God instantly removed it off his hands. It doesn't just work for the old. It works for the babies too. It works for the babies. Oh, what a revelation. What a revelation. Oh, my goodness. Boy, I'm telling you, this has been wonderful. Hasn't this been wonderful? All right. I'm telling you, you know what? Everybody will be going tonight. They'll be thinking, why is everybody buying all this salt? <laughs> I know that's right. I know it. I know it. We may have to go get some from Jenny. All right. Well, is everybody ready for your blessing? <laughs> I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to, God causes it to prosper. Our children shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and the powerful word of God and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I am full, filled up, and run it over with health, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you Sunday at 10. Hallelujah. I told Marty when we got through praying, I said, you better hold on. Oh, I forgot about being detached.